Hey, boo, hey, it is your girl, Takesha. Welcome to the replay. Do me a favor and comment below and let me know where you're checking in from. And while you're checking in, go ahead and share this broadcast as we are getting started. And I'm going to do the same thing. So as you see me pivoting my view, my vision, my line of sight, I'm getting ready to share this. I'm going to try tonight to go live, not only here on uh, Facebook, I'm also going to upload this content to my YouTube channel. So make sure you subscribe to The Healed Rib on YouTube. And I'm also going to try to do this thing on Instagram too. So y'all pray for your girl, okay? Um, so I'm trying to make the most out of the content uh, that I share. And I'm so grateful for each of you that join in by replay or that join me live. I do not take it for granted. So while you're sharing this broadcast, I'm going to go ahead and share it as well. And then while I'm sharing, I'm going to share it. And then I'm going to um, get Instagram up. I think I may have gone uh, live on Instagram, you know, very few times, probably under five times. Um, so I want to really uh, try to do a little more over there. So I'm going ahead to share this um, out. And uh, then I'm going to bring Instagram on live with us. So let's go ahead and post that. Okay, so I shared it. Make sure y'all join in and, and comment and be a part of this conversation tonight because I think it's going to be a good one. Um, I have some notes. Oh, where's my sticky? Oh, I got my sticky note. So I'm ready for the conversation tonight. So let me go ahead and get Instagram up and then we'll get this conversation started. Make sure you go ahead and... Um, Ask somebody in this broadcast, invite them to this broadcast, and yeah, it's going to be good. Let me pull it up as well so that I'm able to see uh, the comments, and we'll get started. So let me go ahead and share this over on Instagram. Hey, boo, hey, it is your girl, Takesha. Welcome to the Instagram Live of The Healed Rib. We are going to be doing a Proverbs recap. I hope that you have been a part of this journey with us. Uh, let me fix that as we have been going live, studying the book of Proverbs for the month of January, and it has been good. So I have you live Instagram. I'm live on uh, Facebook. This will also be uploaded to YouTube. So if you see me moving my view uh, back and forth, it's just simply because I want to engage with all of you. So I am Takesha Morris. I like to call myself the manager of The Healed Rib, which is a ministry created and curated specifically for wives, wives who understand that without God, we cannot do this marriage thing. One of the Lord's help, one of the things that the Lord helped me to know last year is that he was coming for us as the whole person um, that he created us, that he was going to be uh, healing us as his daughters, that he was going to be positioning us as women, and that he was going to be birthing us in the spirit as wives. What I understand is that many of us um, have this daddy-daughter complex, right? We have a daddy-daughter um identity crisis that it's happening with so many women um, in the body of Christ, right? Many of us are struggling to identify with God as our father. And the biggest thing that God wants us to know is that he is our father. Um, you've probably heard the song that God is a good, good father, but it's more than a song. We know that he is a good, good father because he gave his one and only son, Jesus Christ, for us. And that before the foundations of the earth, he called us, he knew us, and he loved us. And so God is restoring who we are as his daughters and re restoring that relationship and bridging those gaps and um, filling in those places where we have been told lies by the enemy. Maybe circumstances in our lives have been lies to us. Maybe our own natural relationships with our fathers um, have not been proven, um, have not proven fruitful uh, for us to know that daddy daughter relationships do exist um, and they can be extremely, extremely beneficial in the life of a woman. But God is doing that. He said that he was also going to uh, position us as women. Many of us as women for different reasons have taken on a very masculine role um, in our marriages um, for whatever reason. And God wants us 
to know that there is true order in marriage, that there is true order in this thing called life. God is the head and our husbands are the head of our family. And as wives, we support them, right? A supporting role doesn't mean that you just sit back and wait for your husband to make a decision. And then you say, oh, I'll support that. No, it means that your husband is the covering. He is the priest of your home and you are supposed to follow his direction. And I know that some wives will may say, you know, to Keisha, well, my husband, uh, does not serve the Lord. He does not believe the Lord. He does not go to church. He does not fast. He does not pray. Um, so I don't um, really trust his decision making. And to that, I'll say, well, sis, you married him, uh, but God is still sovereign. God is still God. And while your husband is making decisions, you as his wife, who is sanctified um, by the Lord, you pray and you ask the Lord to give your husband wisdom to lead your family. Um, and you pray that the Lord pricks and moves on his heart so that he turns his life over to God so that God can be God over your entire family. God also said that he was birthing us as wives, right? One of the things I know is that many of us are wives on paper, but not many of us have been birthed out in the spirit as wives. When we understand our position in the spirit as wives, we will do a lot less complaining and a lot more praying. We will do a lot less hoping, wishing, and thinking and looking at other people's marriages as goals. And we will seek God for what he said our marriage was supposed to be. Your marriage is a reflection of God in the earth, a reflection of his relationship with the body, right? Um, and so when we understand our position as wives in the spirit, we take on a whole different mindset when it comes to this thing called marriage. It's less about having great pictures for Instagram and more about making the name of God great in the earth. And so I'm so excited to be able to share opportunities for you uh, to have an amazing relationship with God as your father, to have an amazing ship, uh, relationship uh, with God as a woman, to have an am amazing relationship with God as a wife and bringing all of you together, leaving nothing on the table and giving God glory through all of it. I get to do that through um, my coaching and consulting firm called The Healed Rib, um, where I get to do group coaching and individual coaching. And I also do mentoring in my group on uh, Facebook uh, called Intentional Love Affair. And I absolutely love that. Absolutely love it. And so tonight, um, we are going to do a recap of Proverbs. Hey, coach, uh, we're going to do a recap of Proverbs. Uh, for those of you that don't know, we have been studying the book of Proverbs for the month of January. Every day we are reading one chapter of Proverbs a day, meditating on it, writing out definitions, getting gut punched and all other things that are happening in Proverbs. Proverbs is truly, <laughs> excuse me, the book. <laughs> We're not about to do this cough tonight. Proverbs is really the book of wisdom. Now, by a show of hands, how many of you have had moments of wait, wait, wait a minute now? as you were reading Proverbs. Did you have any moments where you were just like, is this for real? Like, is this scripture? Is it like, this is crazy. It's so amazing how much wisdom is in the book of Proverbs. One of the Proverbs that I thought was so amazing, I thought that I wrote it down, but I didn't. But I do believe it may have been, actually, let me pull it up. Give me just one second. Um, because I just thought that it was, it was so wise. I like, I, I, that's the only thing that I can think is that it was so wise. Uh, let me find it because I want to share it with you all because it's, it's simple things. And I understand that this is why the Lord tells us to lean not on our own understanding, but in all our ways, acknowledge him and he'll direct our path. Um, so it wasn't there. I know that I shared it today. I know that I did because I was just like, oh, that's good. Um, oh, here it is. Okay. So it's Proverbs 17 and 18. It's from our reading today. Proverbs 17 and 18 in the message version says this, it's stupid. <laughs> it's stupid to try to get something for nothing or run up huge bills you can never pay. I ain't calling nobody out. I ain't saying no names, not even my own. But how many of you, had you read this, uh, this verse in Proverbs, would have less credit card debt, if you have credit card debt, would have a much lower card note, would probably not have as much house debt? 
How many of you would probably have a budget when you go to the grocery store? How many of you would have a budget, <coughs> excuse me, when it comes to Christmas or birthdays or, um, you know, college education, right? That you needed that in college, right? How many of us would make very, very different decisions had we known that that scripture existed in Proverbs and taken it to heart? Right. It's just that kind of thing. And how many of us maybe in our younger years thought that we could get things on our pretty faces and our tight little bodies. Right. We thought that we could really get something for nothing. Or even now in this day where so many people. Matter of fact, we ain't going to talk about so many people. We're going to talk about us as wives. Let's keep it all the way real. Maybe you're at work and you are not doing your part at work. <coughs> Excuse me. And you think that you're going to keep getting paid for eight hours of work and you're sitting there just moving your mouse and doing nothing. The Bible tells us that it's stupid for you to think that you're gonna get something for nothing. Let's bring it on back and take it on home to our marriages. How many of you wives are thinking that you don't have to pray, you don't have to fast, you don't have to esteem your husband, you don't have to do anything, but all of a sudden you are going to have this beautiful marriage. Baby, you trying to get something for nothing. Everything in our lives, no matter what it is, it's going to cost you. It is going to cost you. It is going to cost you something. You will get, you will never get something for nothing. If you don't invest in your marriage, baby, you're going to get something. You're you going to get something. And if you invest well in your marriage, you're going to get something. But many of us, had we known that these kind of things existed in the Bible, we probably would take it to heart a little more. We probably would take that thing to God and say, Father, X, Y, and Z. But your word says that I would be a fool to think I'm going to get something for nothing. And I shouldn't be running up your no huge bills anyway. So help me to be wise in this situation, right? Help me to be wise. I just thought that that Proverbs was so good. And so there was so many other Proverbs, right? We're on day 17. So we've read hundreds of verses at this point. And there were so many that just had me like, chow, bye. You know what I mean? I was repenting. I was laughing. I was like, oh, God, thank you. I didn't fall down that slope. Then I had to repent for pride because you know what I'm saying? It was just a lot going on with the Proverbs. But I'm just so excited for this challenge because I do believe the Lord when he said to me that wisdom would be our currency this year, that wisdom would take us in places and spaces that natural things cannot, that God was literally going to give us supernatural wisdom to be able to execute on levels that we weren't able to execute on before, to be able to execute in ways that we couldn't execute before, to have knowledge and revelation from him that we didn't have before. And so as we are going through this Proverbs challenge, I don't want you to just take it and say, oh, I'm doing it because Takesha is doing it. Excuse me. I'm doing it because Takesha is doing it. No, I want you to do it because it pleases your father in heaven. That you studying his word, you spending time in his word, that it is pleasing to God. And there is not one thing that you do for God that is ever going to be wasted. And that's a scripture too. But yeah, so let's go ahead and get into this uh, Proverbs um, recap. And I thought it was going to be a recap, but then I realized that the Lord had given me some notes today. Okay, the Lord has given me some notes and I want to share them with y'all. I also want to, I probably, this might, matter of fact, I'm not even going to talk about that. That's going to be another video. So tonight we're going to talk about, um, we're going to dive right into Proverbs chapter 17, verse nine. If you're with me, clap once. If you're with me, clap twice. We are going to dive into Proverbs chapter 17, um, verse nine. And this is what, Proverbs 17, verse nine says in the King James Version, it says that he that covereth a transgression seeketh love, but he that repeateth the matter separateth very friends. He that covereth a transgression seeketh love, but he that repeateth the matter separateth very friends. I want to pull that up, <clears throat> excuse me, in a different uh version, you know, that I like uh, to look up different things in different versions. 
Um, so I want to look this up. I'm going to give it to you in the message version. In Proverbs 17 and 9, it says, overlook an offense and bond a friendship. Fasten on to a slight and goodbye friend. Somebody type in the comments, good by friend. Okay. I want to look that up in the passion translation. These are some of the uh, translations that I have really been uh, taking a look at. And this is what I want you to hear um, over in the passion uh, version. And it says, love overlooks the mistakes of others, but dwelling on the failures of others devastates friendships. Love overlooks the mistakes of others but dwelling on the failures of others devastates friendships. I'll just ask the question, how many of you have ever fallen out of friendship with your husband? Have you ever been in a place where you felt like we ain't friends, we ain't nothing, he can go to his corner, I'll stay in my corner. And I don't mean because you were in your feelings because he didn't get you crab legs. I mean, like, you do you and I'm going to do me. Like, we ain't friends. We ain't nothing. Have you ever been there where you and your husband were not friends because of something that happened in your marriage? This is what I heard the Lord say today. It's time to get your friend back. It's time to get your friend back. There are many of us as wives who are struggling in our marriages now. We are trying to have a romantic relationship, but there is no friendship in our marriages. The friendship has come and the friendship has gone. It could be for different reasons. Maybe sickness entered the scene. Maybe babies entered the scene. Maybe new demanding careers. Maybe trauma, infidelity, disrespect. So many different things, right? Could have come and changed the trajectory of what your friendship used to be with your husband. And when friendship is gone, covering is gone. When you are not friends with a person, it's not much you care to cover up for them. You are willing and ready to expose them at every turn. When that person is not your friend and they get slick with their mouth, you don't have much grace, right? Because when it's your friend, right, you know, you'd be like, you know what? That's my boy. I'm going to give him a pass, you know, because he might be in his feelings. He might have had a rough day today. So I'm going to, you know, I'm going a, I'm to a, I'm a back up. You know what I'm saying? I'm going to give him 50 feet and let him be great. But when you're not friends, baby, you ain't covering nothing. You like what you say. You know what I'm saying? You got the claps popping and you are ready to go for his neck. You're making sure that you remembered everything he said. You're, remember the you're remembering the tone in which he said it. And you aren't covering anything. You are repeating that transgression back at him over and over and over and over again until he realizes what he's done to you. And even sometimes when our husband apologizes for the transgression, many of us are still repeating it because we don't think that he understands exactly how we feel. When friendship is no longer a part of your marriage, you ain't covering no transgressions. And I heard the Lord say, it's time to turn back to your friend. The Lord says that it's time to turn over the transgressions of your husband. Turn over the transgressions of your wife, because sometimes we have men who are joining and watching and we don't know. Turn it over to God and be restored to your friend. I think that this week is the great week of the turnover. That's what I heard the Lord say, that this is the week of the great turnover, to turn over your hopes and your dreams, your fears and your hurts, your secrets, turn them over and allow the Lord to establish you. Turn over your marriage to the hands of the Lord and allow him to be the great potter. 
You need to turn over pride. You need to turn over unspoken hurt. You need to turn over whatever it is that has separated you from your friend. The Lord says that this is going to be the week of the great turnover. Turn over the marriages of your bloodline and let God reestablish the covenant. This is what I heard the Lord say this morning. The Lord says to commit the work of your turnover to the Lord and he will establish your thoughts according to Proverbs 16 and 3. What I know about this place of the great turnover and the Lord establishing your thoughts when you do that was a very real experience in my own life. And I want to share that in just a second. What I understand also is that um, many of us, we may read that scripture and say, well, Takesha, I'm not I'm not repeating anything back to my husband. I'm not saying anything to him. Yeah, he transgressed. Yeah, he made me upset. Yeah, he didn't do his part. Yeah, this, that, and the third, but I'm not repeating it. But I'll challenge you and say, are you repeating it in your mind? Are you playing it over and over again every time a situation happens in your marriage? Are you calling your mother and your father and your cousin and your sister and your bestie and posting subliminal messages on Facebook? Are you repeating them over, maybe not to your husband, but you're repeating them over and over again with your actions towards your husband, with your demeanor towards your husband, with your countenance in your house? Have you stopped praying for your husband? Have you stopped fasting for your husband? Have you stopped esteeming your husband? Are you repeating the matter in another way? And many of us as wives are doing just that. And the Lord says, it's time to turn it over. And so when I think about the Lord and he says to commit the work of your turnover, what does that mean? When you are turning something over, you are literally relinquishing the power from you and giving it to another. When you turn over something, it's like when you have a gift that you bought for a friend. When you turn that gift over to your friend, it is no longer yours. Whether your friend decides to take that gift and throw it in the garbage, whether they decide to, <coughs> excuse me, take that gift and sell it, whether they decide to take that gift and leave it in the restaurant that you gave it to them, it is no longer yours. When you turn it over, you are relinquishing your authority over that thing. You are relinquishing your ownership of that thing. And so when the Lord says, turn over your marriage, turn over your broken heart, turn over the transgressions of your spouse, he's saying, relinquish ownership from you and give it to me because you couldn't handle it in the first place. Many of us are not good stewards with transgressions. I know that sounds funny, right? How can you be a good steward of a transgression? In order to be a good steward of a transgression, especially in your marriage, is to do exactly what Proverbs 17 and 9 says. Cover it. If you were at the conference this past August, you may have heard uh, Pastor Yoshika Blue, and she said that there was a situation in her marriage, and many people thought she was covering up for her husband. And what she said is that, no, 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 I wasn't covering up for him. I was covering him. And there is a difference. And so maybe transgression has entered your marriage. But I want to admonish you, wise wife, is that you're not covering up for what your husband did and sweeping it under the rug and trying to establish false peace. No, you're going to cover him. And the way that you cover him is you take that transgression and you become a good steward of it, not harboring it in your heart, not harboring it and saving it to drop on the table like the big joker in spades. No, you take that transgression and you bring it to the Lord. And you say, Father, this is what it is. This is how it made me feel. This is how I wanted to lash out. This is what I wanted to say. But I understand that your word in Proverbs 17 and 9 says that I should cover this transaction. That's what love does. And so I'm taking this transgression, God, and I'm giving it to you because I need wisdom on how to handle it. Do I say something? Do I not say something? Do I uh, discuss this situation with him now or do I discuss this situation with him later? What do I do with this transgression, God? Because I don't want to keep repeating it. Hey, y'all over on Instagram. I don't want to keep repeating it because if I keep repeating the matter, it's going to separate me from my friend. 
And I don't know about you. I don't know many wives who want to be separated from their friend. And so the Lord says that this is the week of the great turnover, that you're going to take the transgressions that exist in your marriage that you have been repeating in your mind, waiting for the other shoe to drop, repeating to your friends, repeating to your coworkers, repeating in subliminal messages on Facebook and give them to God. God says that when we commit the work of our turnover, when we commit the work of our prayers, when we commit the work of our fasting, when we commit the work of what we're doing to the Lord, we're saying, okay, God, you, you sent the word through your, your servant that this was the week of the great turnover and that I should take these transgressions in my marriage and turn them over to you. God, I don't really know how to do that. I'm not really sure what to do, but what I do know is that I'm going to bring these to you in prayer and I'm going to believe that you hear me because your word says that you incline your ear to me. And so I'm turning these over to you. And as I'm turning these over to you, God, I thank you that as I'm turning it over to you, that you're going to establish my thoughts concerning this thing. So when the Lord establishes your thoughts, that means that the Lord is going to give you strategy in the matter. I don't know about you, but how many of you by a show of hands can use a little bit of strategy in your marriage? Whether your marriage no matter what season it's in, whether you're in the season of winter where it seems like everything is dead or you're in spring where it seems like everything is blooming and growing and great. No matter where it is, we can all use strategy in our marriage. Why? Because our friend, our husband or your wife Things are always changing. They're growing. They're becoming different people. They're learning things about themselves and who they were a year ago is not necessarily who they are today. What they tolerated five years ago is not what they are tolerating today. And so we need strategy in our marriages so that we are always above, you know, above the, the, the course when it comes to our husbands, always above when it comes to who our husbands are or your wife, if you're a man watching this broadcast. We always want to be ahead of the game when it comes to our marriages and not playing catch up. We always want to be ready for what is to come. We also want to be ready and have strategy when it comes to our marriages, because we know that the Bible tells us that the enemy comes to steal, kill and destroy. And that means your marriage as well. Your marriage is a legacy in the earth. It is a representation of the body of Christ and God, right? It is a representation of that covenant. And so the enemy would love nothing more than to rip that covenant apart, to rip your family apart, to have your children out here thinking that great marriages don't exist, to have other people who may not have seen great marriages but was watching yours from afar think that great marriages don't exist. He would love nothing more than to tear that apart. So we as wise wives who are studying the book of Proverbs and seeking the face of God, we have to take that turnover and say, Father, I need strategy on how to keep the enemy from ravaging my marriage. I thank you that you cover me, but I also thank you for making me a watchman over my marriage. And so when we take what the Lord is doing, the Lord says, when you give it to him, he's going to establish your thoughts. The Lord is going to give you strategy and let me prove it to you. Many years ago, my husband and I were facing one of the hardest times um, in our marriage. And some of you may have had heard this testimony before, but many of um, my husband and I were facing a very hard time um, in our marriage. And just like I said before, we weren't covering anything because we were not each other's friends. There had been a lot of hurt. There had been a lot of pain. There had been a lot of breaking of vows on both sides because we were ignorant. We were young and we literally thought we could get something for nothing. Y'all remember we just read that in Proverbs, right? We really thought we could get something for nothing, but we know today that that ain't the case. And I remember standing at my kitchen sink, just being flustered and tired and just over it. Has anybody ever just been over it? I was just over it, you guys. I was over it, y'all. And so I remember standing at my kitchen sink and I was crying. Crying. It was these hot, big tears. You know what I'm saying? I'm trying to get some better light over here on Instagram, but I'm not sure what's happening. But it was those hot, big tears. You know what I'm saying? Like, just who? Like, God, if you can't do it, nobody can. Like, I was praying for a divorce daily. Okay. And I remember standing at my kitchen sink 
And I cried out to the Lord and I was like, Lord, you said that I could not get a divorce. Every time I asked you, you said no. So if the answer is no, you're going to have to help me. That's a desperate prayer. You are going to have to help me. And the Bible is true. The Lord will establish your thoughts when you turn over the matter to him. I turned the matter over to God and I said, you are going to have to help me. The Lord said, bet, get some honey. Get some what? The Lord said, get some honey and put it on your lips. And I said, Lord, clearly, you cannot be giving me a remedy for chat lips right now. Like I am falling apart here. I am ready to pack my satchel and get out of here. And you are giving me a remedy for chat lips like this. This cannot be life. Like what is happening? And the Lord said, put honey on your lips. There was no power in the honey, but it was power in my obedience because the Lord was establishing my thoughts. The thoughts that the Lord give you will always be thoughts of strategy. And the Lord said, when you put this honey on your lips, it is going to remind you to be sweet, to talk sweet, and to think sweetly concerning your husband. What the Lord was giving me strategy to be was a friend that covered in love. What the Lord was allowing me to be is a friend in a very difficult situation. What the Lord was allowing me to know is that there is strategy even in trauma. And as I put that honey on my lips, every day it would remind me. Were there were some days when the honey was just sweet and I wasn't? Absolutely. But can I tell you today that if that was in year five, I'm about to celebrate year 17 in September. Why? Because when the Lord establishes your thoughts, he's going to give you strategy. And when you are willing and obedient to follow that thing through, God is going to give you victory. And today I can say that my husband is my friend. He covers transgressions for me. I cover transgressions for him. We don't cover it up. We cover each other. Why? Because nobody else needs to know what's going on in our marriage. We don't even have to expose each other to each other. Yes, there are opportunities, absolutely, where we may have a discussion, right? There are opportunities where the, we will have discussion right then and there, and we got to go break, right? This is this is too much. There are opportunities when I say, you know what, Keish, mind your business right now. Go pray, go walk, go do something with your life, because if you have this conversation right now, there is nothing about you that will cover there is nothing about you that will be a friend to your husband right now. There is nothing about you that won't repeat this matter tomorrow. There is nothing about you in this moment that is strong enough to bring those thoughts into subjection under the Lord because you want to fight. And when you want to fight, you ain't bringing nothing under subjection. You saying, where's that? Where's that? Bring them out. Bring them out. Like we are ready for war. But when we pause and say, you know what, God, I really want you to establish my thoughts. I really want to be my husband's friend. I really want to be a friend to my husband. So I'm going to cover that thing in prayer. And so maybe you're in a place, maybe you're in a, you're in a place where you're saying, you know, I, I really don't think that my husband is my friend anymore. The Lord said that this is the week of the great turnover. And so, you know, as a coach, coaches typically give you homework. And most times that you join me live, I give you homework. And so I want you to think about those things that are playing repeat on your mind. I want you to think about those subliminal posts that you put on Facebook. And by the way, go delete it, sis, sir, go delete it. I want you to think about those things that are playing on repeat that your husband did two years ago, three years ago, seven days ago. I want you to write those things down and then I want you to go and turn them over to the Lord. When you turn them over to the Lord, it means that you're relinquishing control. They are no longer yours to own. You are giving them up to someone who can resolve it because you clearly can't. And that's okay. Take those things and turn them over to the Lord. The Lord says, turn over the transgressions of your husband. Turn over the transgressions of your wife. Turn them over to God and be restored to your friend. 
If you're wondering why the intimacy is not working, it's because you aren't his friend and he's not yours. Ask God to restore your friendship, but there's a prerequisite. In order to be restored into your friendship, you're going to have to turn over the transgressions. You're going to have to let them go. You are going to have to turn over the hopes that you have for your marriage that seem like they may have died or seem like maybe they're just taking too long. You're going to have to turn over the dreams that you had about how you wanted to be your husband's wife or what it looks like for your husband to be your husband. You want to turn over any fears that you have. Maybe there are some things that you are still holding on to in your heart that you're hoping that your husband never finds out. Maybe you're turning over hurts that may have happened in your marriage or may have happened before your marriage, but you're repeating them with your husband. You want to turn over those secrets, those things that you, you dare not speak. You want to turn those things over so that the Lord himself can establish you. You want to turn over your marriage to the hands of the Lord and allow him to be the great potter. I was watching a video yesterday, um, and I please forgive me, I forgot the name of it, but it was this ancient way of making teapots. The teapots are really small, and they are done uh, by masters, right? And in order to be considered a master, you have to have 25 years of experience with making these teapots. Not only do you have to have 25 years of making this teapot, you also have to pass like a rigorous test where you are watched every step of the way of making this teapot. These teapots sells for tens of thousands of dollars and it's a small teapot. And I wanna say that it only holds maybe one cup and they, they are intricate or they can be simple, but they sell for thousands of thousands of dollars. Why? Because of the clay. Why? Because of the potter. This particular clay, and I'm so sorry that it's slipping my mind, but this particular clay that they use is not ordinary clay that you're going to get from Hobby Lobby. It's a very rare clay that's almost extinct, they said. And because it's so expensive, it's expensive to buy one of these pots. And because the person that's crafting the pot is a master in order to be able to sell it and call them. I got to find that information. I'm going to post it here. In order for themselves to call themselves a master potter, they have to have 25 years experience and they don't even get to take the test until they've been in the, in the game for 25 years. Just making them. Now, can you imagine our God who is the master potter? There ain't nobody who been in the game longer than him. There is nobody in the game who can make pottery like him. There is nobody in the game that can take something from nothing like our God. And God says, turn your marriage over to him because he is the great potter. Not only is there value because God is the one putting your marriage back together, but there is value because just like that rare clay, your marriage, your union, your husband, you as a wife, you are rare. And what's going to be poured from your marriage is going to be the best thing that anybody has ever seen. It is going to literally be God's, God's glory in the earth. The Bible says, let your light so shine so that men would look on and glorify your father that is in heaven. How beautiful is it going to be when people look onto your marriage and say, there must be a God. When people say, what is it that you're doing? Because I remember when, what is it that you're doing? I've never seen a couple so in love and so happy. Can I share one of the dreams that I have for my marriage? One of the dreams that I have for my marriage is that my husband and I would be at a place where we don't really know anybody. And I may be on one side of the room and he's on the other. And the people that we're talking to know each other. And maybe we have small things in common with them or, you know, we have small um, like acquaintances with them, but they don't really know us. They don't know that I'm married to Chris and they don't know that Chris is married to me. But when they begin to talk to us as we're moving around the room and Brittany talks to Chris and Brittany talks to me and she says, there's somebody I think you should meet. I don't know if she's married. 
I don't know if you're married because I don't know you like that, but there is somebody I think you should meet. And when they bring us together, they will see, oh, that's my husband. Why? 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 Why would they be able to do that? Because that's my friend and we speak the same language. That's my friend. And it's something about us that is magnetic that everybody else in the room will be able to feel. And when they feel it, they'll be like, you know what? These two people belong together. I don't even know them. I don't know anything about them. But these two people belong together. Are y'all related? Do y'all know each other? Because there's something about y'all. And we say, yes, we're married. That's one of my dreams for my marriage. And then people would look on and glorify God because they would say, I've never seen anything like that before. I've never seen the connection of two people before that I didn't know. And they would say, how did you get here? And we'll say, do you really want to know? And when they say yes, that's our entry to say it was only by the grace of God. God has favored us. He has given us wisdom and he has allowed his face to shine upon us. God did it. We showed up, but God did it. We didn't show up and God did it. It was all by the grace of God. And so this is the week of the great turnover. Don't take this opportunity lightly to take those things that you have been repeating over and over and over and over and over again. The Bible says that when you repeat a matter, you separate the very friends. Right, Britt? When you repeat a matter, you are separating yourself from your friend. If you have been separated from your friend, aren't you ready to restore that thing? Aren't you ready to love him again and laugh with him again and let it be pure? Aren't you ready to be happy when you walk around your house and happy when you're planning dinner? Aren't you ready to be restored unto your friend? If you're ready to be restored unto your friend, get a pen and get a paper and begin to write those things down that you keep repeating. And allow the Holy Ghost to lead you because some of us would try to leave some things in the back. Oh, no, 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 no. I'm not writing that down because <laughs> that was too much. That was too deep. I don't know if I can ever forgive him for that. Write it down. Write it down. And the Lord says, turn over not only your marriage, but the marriages of your bloodline. Those are the marriages that are and those are the marriages that are to come. Cover yourself to a thousand generations and lay those marriages before the Lord. When I was going through the worst time in my marriage, the Lord established my thoughts and gave me wisdom and strategy. Had I not asked the Lord for help, I would not be before you today as a married woman. I would be single and probably bitter. When God was giving me that strategy for honey, it seemed really foolish. I didn't understand it. I didn't understand how it was going to help, but the ways of the Lord are sure. The ways of the Lord are sure. And the sooner we realize that, the sooner we come into agreement with who God is and what God says, and we take his word at face value, and stop trying to figure out how it's going to work. I didn't understand how honey would work, but it was the wisdom of God that knew what was going to happen because my heart was ready. And you may think, Takesha, my heart is not ready to forgive. My heart is not ready to let go of these things. And I challenge you to do this exercise with the Holy Spirit. I challenge you to do that anyway. I challenge you to get your piece of paper, your notebook or whatever it is and say, Father, help me. I really want my friend, but I don't know if I can let go of what he did. I really want my friend, but I'm not sure I can let go of what she did for those husbands that may be watching. I'm not really sure I can let it go, but Father, I want my friend back. I don't want to be in a loveless marriage. I don't want to be in a friendshipless marriage. God, I want your best for us, and I know that I'm the one holding it up. And you may say, well, I didn't do anything. I, I'm not holding it up. You are if you're not releasing your husband. But he did everything as a husband. She did everything. It doesn't matter. The Bible says in Proverbs 6, 17 and 9, he that covereth a transgression seeketh love. 
but he that repeated the matter separated the very friends. So what is it that you're holding on to that your spouse did? Write it down and ask Holy Spirit to walk with you through this thing. I'm not saying that it's going to be easy, but I'm telling you it's going to be worth it. God said that this was the week of the great turnover. Wouldn't it be amazing to walk into next week new with your husband as your friend, with your wife as your friend, and the restoration process begins simply because you decided to step up? I heard a saying before that somebody has to be the bigger person in marriage. Let it be you. Let it be you. And so I thank you all for joining me tonight for this recap of Proverbs. I thought it was going to be a recap, but the Lord gave me a word concerning Proverbs uh, 17 and 9. If you are just joining us, we are reading through the book of Proverbs uh, for the month of January. Every day we are reading a new uh, chapter um, in the book of Proverbs. And today we are on chapter 17. You can pick up and start today on chapter one or start at chapter 17 and go all the way through and then circle back and work your way back. Or however you want to do it, we would love for you to join us. We would love for you to also be a part of our YouTube community. You can find us over on YouTube at The Healed Rib. You can find us um, online at TakeshaMorris.com and all over social media at The Healed Rib. We have some that are asking about reading the book, Honey. Um, it will be on my website soon, but today you can get that. Um, it's an ebook, instant download. You could go to Amazon.com and type in Honey by Takesha S. Morris, um, and you will find it there. I would love for you to give me feedback. So once you read Honey, it is written as a conversation. Uh, for those who have read it, it is written as a conversation. The foreword for the book, Honey, is written by um, Elder K. Starks, who is a multi-time Amazon best-selling writer. I don't even know how many times now, um, but the foreword is absolutely powerful. And the book is written as a conversation to another wife. And it's allowing you to understand just how powerful your words are concerning your marriage. It's a quick read, but it's a mighty read. And I think that it is a blessing to any wife or any husband who reads it because you will understand how powerful your words are and you will become more careful with the words that come out of your mouth. I have wives today who tell me they carry honey packets. Um, they get bottles of honey. Like it is a part of their staple because they know that it's not the power in the hunt, wanting to be a friend to your husband. And so um, I thank you all so much for rocking with your girl tonight. Thank you all over on Instagram for rocking with me tonight. This is going to go up on my YouTube channel uh, probably tomorrow or Wednesday uh, for our YouTube community. But I would love your feedback. If you get the book, honey, over on Amazon, leave me a comment. Make sure you follow us on social media. And don't forget that the Wife ID cohort for February is open. Registration is open. Um, that course is limited uh, to 20 seats. It is a, a course helping wives to uncover and discover their true identity in Christ, peeling off these layers uh, that we've put on and accepting the identities of the world, but taking those off and agreeing with who God says uh, that you are. It is a strategic and intensive uh, four-week session together uh, with live coaching strategies, um, a um, branded uh, workbook for you to use, um, a private um, offline uh, so a group that we can have conversations, pray with each other, ask questions, and so many other things. And so I would love for you to be a part of that cohort. You can visit Um Also, uh, for those of you um, who know that I am a Sanctuary Girl ambassador, Sanctuary Girl is a beautiful and amazing um, boutique um, in person and online um, that basically allows you to come in contact with the word of God daily. What I love about Sanctuary Girl is that it is not a Christian cliche company. You know, many people have t-shirt lines and different things like that, where um, they just put um, Christian quotes on it and things like that. So that us Christian girls would rock it. But Sanctuary Girl is a, a ministry, right? It is a ministry. All of their products are steeped in the word of God and steeped in prayer. Uh, Sabrina and Chris, who are the owners of Sanctuary Girl, who uh, so I, I met Chris once, I think, but I've been in contact with Sabrina many times, worked with her in her store, talked to her on the phone. Sabrina is truly a woman after God's heart. And so is her husband and their daughters uh, who run their company and everybody who is a part of the company. And so Sanctuary Girl has just released their new blanket line. They just released their new marriage blanket line. And if you're over 
on Instagram. You can find that link in my bio to check those out. And they have been prayed over. Um, and it's just an absolutely beautiful thing. And so I believe that every marriage should be covered in the word of God. And what better reminder than to bundle up and snuggle up with your friend this winter season. So you can go over. Um, it's in my link, um, in my bio, um, in can't even think. It's in my bio over on Instagram. I'll post the link on YouTube and I'm going to also um, share the link right here. Um, let me get it. Uh, I'm going to share the link right over here in, um, on Facebook as well. I want to make sure that I link directly um, to the blanket so that when you click on it, you can see excuse me, you can see it, but look all over the site. There are absolutely beautiful products um, online at Sanctuary Girl. And if you're in Georgia, uh, you can check out their newest store, uh, which is in Noonan, Georgia, and be on the lookout for them because they are uh, coming up all over the United States. Um, and so again, thank you all so much for rocking with me. Don't forget, this is the week of the great turnover. So write those things down that are separating you from your friend, those things that you are repeating over and over in your mind and your speech and your actions and your demeanor, whatever transgressions of your spouse that you are repeating over and over again, write those things down, give them to the Lord and allow the Lord to be God and allow the Lord to establish your work as you're turning them over. And he's going to give you thoughts of strategy. And I can say that for sure because he did it for me. I pray that you all have an amazing night. If you have any questions, any comments or any feedback, do me a favor and leave me a message on whatever social media site you find yourself on or email me at thehealedrib at gmail.com. Thank you so much for rocking with your girl. And I pray that you have an amazing, amazing rest of your night. Bye, Instagram. Facebook, thank you all so much for rocking with your girl. I pray that you have an amazing night. Um, and um, uh, let me just type this here. Uh, I, I didn't realize you had to do all this to... Um, share on um instagram i love you mrs wilcox and girl i am so sorry i meant to text you i didn't realize it i think a day or two or whatever to say happy one month anniversary <laughs> happy one month anniversary mrs wilcox i love you all so much i really hope that you know that my prayer um uh oh yeah so there's the um video posting. I just really hope that you know that my prayer for each of you is that you know exactly who God has called you to be. Being a wife is not easy, y'all. Okay, this is the after party and I'm going I'm to go. Um, but being a wife is just, it's it's not easy. We have so many things coming up against us. We are trying to find our balance um, in this world, in this life, in our marriages. If those of you who have children, businesses on your job, just everything, right? We have so many things, you know, wear your hair straight, wear your hair natural, wear lashes, don't wear lashes, get your snap back, don't get your snap back, read your Bible, oh, just read a bird. Like, it's just so many things that we have coming up against us. But what I know this to be true is that God is for us. And I was speaking with another wife the other day, and she was sharing some things, nothing that I'm going to share here, but I just want to share uh, the scripture um, that, that the Lord allowed me to share with her. And it just kind of, not kind of, but it helps you to understand why um, it's just so much. Let me let me find it here. Uh, 1 Corinthians 7 and 34. 1 Corinthians 7 and 34. Let me pull that up real quick. Um, 1 Corinthians 7 and 34. Oh, here it is. Go back. It's still under my open tabs. In 1 Corinthians 7 and 34, it says, there is a difference. Also, hey, Hope, there is a difference also between a wife and a virgin. The unmarried woman careth for the things of the Lord, that she may be holy both in body and in spirit. But she that is married careth for the things of the world, how she may please her husband. Okay. I thought that was so powerful. I want to look it up. 
Um, and if, yeah, I know I like to look up different versions. And so if any of you are struggling with understanding, okay, why, why is, does it feel like there's always this battle? You know what I mean? Like this battle of me trying to figure out, you know, trying to be my husband's wife, trying to, you know, do things that are pleasing to him, trying to do things that are pleasing to the Lord, you know, just, just like how, how can I do all these things and be successful at it? The Bible says that, you know, that the, the, the virgin, the unmarried woman, she can have her cares on the, on the, on the Lord. She can have her cares on being holy, but as a wife, you, your, your, I don't want to say your allegiance because your allegiance is to God, but your thought process is all over the place. You have thoughts on your kids, thoughts on your husband's thought, like your thoughts are all over the place and you have so many balls that you got to keep in the air. And so let me see the merit, the message version says, I want you to live as free. I want you to live as free of complications as possible. When you're unmarried, you're free to concentrate on simply pleasing the master. Marriage involves you in all the nuts and bolts of domestic life and in wanting to please your spouse, leading to so many more demands on your attention. The time and energy that married people spend on caring for and nurturing each other, the unmarried can spend in becoming whole and holy instruments of God. Ooh, child. I'm trying, okay, so it goes on to say it's trying to be helpful, whatever. But it says that the time and energy that people, married people spend on caring for, that caring for and nurturing each other, that means we have a lot of time that is spent on each other. And so maybe you found yourself in a place and you're just like, I just don't know how to balance this thing. We read in, um, we, we read the verse in, let me go back here, Proverbs 16 and 3 that says that the Lord would establish our um, thoughts, that the Lord will establish our thoughts. When we commit our work to the Lord, he will establish our thoughts. So if you are feeling like you are unbalanced in your marriage, that you are just not sure, commit the work that you're doing in your marriage from your cooking to your cleaning, to your loving, to whatever it is, your work, <coughs> excuse me, whatever you're doing in your marriage, commit that thing to the Lord and he's gonna establish your thoughts and he's gonna give you strategy on how to work this thing called marriage out. I have many things now that I need to take to the Lord um, in strategy after reading Proverbs because I didn't have wisdom in some situation. I just wasn't sure how to do some things and how to move in some areas. But thanks be to God, who is the one who establishes our thoughts. And so I pray tonight that you would allow the Lord to establish your thoughts, that you no longer hold on to these transgressions, that you go back and get your friend. And but most of all, that you turn these things over to the Lord so that he can do what he can do best. And that is be God. And so I pray that you guys have an amazing, amazing rest of your night. Uh, and I love you all. Thank you all for rocking with your girl. If you just joining us, thank you. Um, go back and watch the replay. I think this one was pretty good. Um, and I'll be uploading it to YouTube um, probably in about a day or two. But I'm going to go ahead and use wisdom and hang out with my honey. Okay. So I love y'all so much. I pray that you have an amazing, amazing, amazing rest of your night. God bless you all. Bye.